Even though this lesson is called exponential and logarithmic equations, we are going to start with solving logarithmic equations. And I'm doing this because this is how your homework starts as well. So you have two kind of things or two different options on how to solve log equations. First, if it is possible, we want to use this property here, where if I have log base b of m equals log base b of n, we can cancel those out and set those equal to each other. You have to make sure that there's not anything else going on. So for example, if you had log base b of m equals log base b of n plus five, then you could not use this property because it's not just a log equals a log. Okay, if we can, this is always going to be the easiest thing. So we're going to look for it first. If we can't use this property, then we have four steps. First, you need to isolate the log. Step two, you need to then rewrite your log equation as an exponential, then solve the equation. And because logs have a restriction on its domain, once you solve for it, you then need to plug in your answer and see if you have any extraneous solutions like we did with radical equations. So example one, solve each log equation. We want to express solutions in exact form. So this means this means no. decimals. And actually decimals are fine, so it's kind of a bad, bad note, but uh, no rounding is really what we're saying here. So if you get a decimal that's 0.75 and it ends right there, that's a good number. That's exact form. But if it's 0.75 blah, 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 and you round it to 0.75, then it's not an exact form anymore. It's an approximation. So uh, no rounding is probably what we should be saying here instead. So first one here, if we can apply this property, we want to. And here you have a natural log equals a natural log, so we can use this property. So we'll cancel those out. And now I have 2x minus 9 equals x plus 5. So subtract your x over. and then add your nine over, and we get x equals 14. Now, even though this step four, check for extraneous solutions, is only in the second method, we really need to do that for every time. So if we plug in 14 in here, do I get a positive number? Well, two times 14 is 28, minus nine gives me a positive. 14 plus five is positive, so this is a good solution here. Now here, can I apply the same property? And I cannot yet. I can eventually get it into this form here, but I can't the way it is written because this isn't a log equals a log. This is two times a log equals a log. So it's not in this form. So what I can do is take this two right here and move it up top and get natural log five of x squared equals natural log five of nine. Now I have a log equals a log, and now we can apply this log property here. So now our log base fives cancel, and I'm left with x squared equals nine. We'll take the square root of both sides and get x equals three and x equals negative 3. Now check for extraneous solutions. When you plug in 3 here into the original, we get 2 log base 5 of 3. This one works. But when I plug in negative 3, I'm going to get 2 log base 5 of negative 3. And that does not work. So this one is extraneous.
starting with C, I can't apply this property anymore because this is a log equals a number. So I don't even have two logs here. So we are going to the second method right here. First, we need to isolate the log. Well, it is isolated because it's log of x plus 6, but nothing's being added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided to this log. Something's being added within the log, but nothing's being added outside of it. So now we're already here to step two, rewrite it. What does this look like as an equivalent exponential? Well, this is a common log with a base of 10. So when I go base to the other side of the equals, we get 10 to the first equals what's inside of this log right here. So 10 to the first is just 10. So we're going to subtract that 6 over. And we're going to get that x equals 4. Now check it. When you plug in this 4 into this equation, do you get a positive log? Yes, that is log 10. And so x plus 4, or x equals 4 is our answer here. Okay, D, very similar. My I can't apply this property right up here. So isolate the log, and it's isolated. you got log base 3 of something, but nothing's being added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided outside of that log. So now we need to rewrite. This is log base 3. So base to the other side of the equals gives me 3 cubed equals what is left over, which is 1 minus 2x. So now let's solve. 3 cubed is 27. Subtract your 1 and divide by negative 2. And we're going to get x equals negative 13. Don't just automatically throw out negative numbers. If I check over here, which I haven't worked any out, but this one I think is important enough to actually write out. If I plug that in, it's not, did I get a value that's negative? It's when I plug it back in, do I get a negative within my log? So when I plug this in, we get log base 3 of 1 minus 2 times negative 13. <clears throat> so log base 3 of negative 2 times negative 13 is a positive 26. And so here we get log base 3 of 27. So I have a positive base and a positive what it is of here. That means this right here is not extraneous. It works. So don't just automatically throw out negatives. A lot of times negatives won't work, but it's not always a guarantee. Carrying on to the next page. We get a little bit harder on this second page, but we're going to use those same three steps. Isolate, rewrite, solve. Okay, so first, isolate. Here I have two logs. So how do we isolate this to one where we're going to condense it? Because these two logs with the same base are being added together, I can rewrite this as a single log by multiplying. So now this is log of 5 times x plus 2 equals 2. So let's go ahead and simplify what I have here within that log. And we have log of 5x plus 10. Now I have a single log I have isolated. So now step 2 is to rewrite. Common logs have a base of 10. So I'm going to go base to the other side of the equals, and that's going to equal what's inside. So we've got 10 squared equals 5x plus 10. I have a linear equation to solve. 10 squared is 100. 100 minus 10 is 90. Divide by 5, and we get x equals 18. 
Now here I have multiple logs, but I can't plug into log of five, so we don't need to worry about that one. But when I plug in this 18 to this log, we get 18 plus two, we're gonna get log of 20. So yes, that works. Okay, this one's very similar here. We have two logs over here on the left side of the equation. Because these are being added together, we need to multiply what's within those logs. So we get log of x times x minus 21. I'm gonna distribute in. And we have log of x squared minus 21x equals two. So now I have isolated that log. Step two is to rewrite. This is again a common log. So we have a base of 10. So I'm gonna go base to the other side of the equals. And this equals what it is of. This time I have a quadratic. So we're gonna need factoring. I didn't put that in the preparing for this lesson, uh, but we're gonna need factoring as well. So this is 100. I'm gonna subtract it over so that I have everything on one side of the equation. Again, 10 squared is 100. I'm subtracting it over, so minus 100. And now let's see if we can factor specifically because this is an easy trinomial. Uh, let's go over here. So my a times c is 1 times negative 100. My b is negative 21. What adds up to b but multiplies to ac? Pause the video if you want a little bit more time. Okay, it's negative 25 and 4. So when you multiply, you get to negative 21, or sorry, to negative 100. When you add these numbers together, you get negative 21. So now I have x minus 25 and x plus 4. When I set this equal to 0, I'm going to get x equals 25. And when I set x plus 4 equal to 0, I get x equals negative 4. So let's plug those in and make sure both of these logs here have an X. So we need to make sure it works for both of the logs. So here, when I plug in 25, we get log of 25. And here, when I plug it in, 25 minus 21 is log of 4. So both of those come out to a positive log. What about this one here? When you plug in this, it doesn't work in either. You get log of negative 4, so automatically it's out. And here you get log of negative 25. So this one is extraneous. All right, two more examples here on G. This time, I have three logs here. So what I need to do is condense on this side to get one log on the left, or sorry, on the right. So we get natural log x just comes down. Here, because these two natural logs are subtracting, I'm going to divide what's within that log. So we get natural log of x plus 6 over x minus 4. Now that I have condensed this to one log, we can actually apply this first property now that I have a log equals a log, a log equals a log. So I'm gonna cancel these out and I am left with x equals x plus six over x minus four. And you can solve this However you like, if you want to just get rid of this denominator and multiply both sides by x minus 4, you can. I like to kind of treat this as a, um, as a proportion. So I'm going to put this x over 1 
kind of works out that you can't see it, but we're going to put that over one. Here's let's see if one. Okay, over one and then cross multiply. You can cross multiply in either direction. If I go this way first, this is x times x minus 4, distribute this x. So x times x is x squared, and x times negative 4 is negative 4x equals, cross multiply the other way, 1 times x plus 6 is x plus 6. So we have another quadratic, so we're going to subtract our x over. So negative 4x minus x is negative 5x, and subtract your 6 over. And I'll try factoring this quadratic. My a times c is 1 times negative 6, and my b is negative 5. What adds up to negative 5 but multiplies to negative 6? Pause the video if you want a little bit more time. Okay, a common mistake on this one is that we'll say negative 2 and negative 3. And negative 2 plus negative 3 does get me to negative 5, but negative times negative will give me a positive 6. So it's not negative 2 and negative 3. We're looking at negative 6 and 1. So when you add those together, you still get negative 5, but now when you multiply, you get to that negative 6. Because it's an easy trinomial, this factors to x minus 6, x plus 1. When I set this equal to 0, we get that x equals 6. And when I set this equal um, to 0, we get x equals negative 1. Now plug them in. This one has to work for all three of these logs to, to work. So when I plug in a 6, we get natural log 6, natural log 12, and natural log 2. Everything is positive. So x equals 6 is a solution. Is this also a solution? Right from the get, it's not. You get natural log of negative one. So it is extraneous. It has to work for all three. So once it doesn't work for one, you can stop. But if you notice, if you plug in negative one here, you do get natural log of five, but it doesn't matter that it works for one if it doesn't work for at least one of the other ones. Okay, and then our last problem here. My on-campusers, this looks like a good test question to me. And I like it because, I guess kind of because it's tricky, but you got to know what you're doing here. I can't tell you how many times you guys come to this in a test question and you apply this property here and cancel out your logs, but you cannot do that. Why? because of that pesky plus one. If that wasn't there, then you could cancel out your logs and set 4x plus three equal to x plus two. But because of this one, you cannot apply this property. So I need to isolate my log. So to do that, we're gonna subtract this entire log over to the left side. So I'm gonna get log of 4x plus 3 minus log of x plus 2 equals 1. Now we're very similar to where we started right here and even in this one right here. I have a log with the same base on one side. Because we are subtracting, we're going to divide what's within. So we get log of 4x plus 3 over x plus 2 equals 1. I have isolated my log. Next thing we do is rewrite. This is a common log with a base of 10. So base to the other side of the equals gets me 10 to the first. And that equals what's within that log. 4x plus 3 over x plus 2. Again, I would treat this as a proportion. So I'm going to set this over 1. 
and cross multiply. Doesn't matter which way you cross multiply first. I go this way. 10 to the first is just 10. So 10 times x is 10x. And 10 times 2 is 20. And then cross multiply the other way. 1 times 4x plus 3 is 4x plus 3. Now we have a linear equation. So I'm going to subtract my 4x over. To get 6x, and I'm going to subtract my 20 over to get negative 17. Divide by 6, and we get x equals negative 17 over 6. We're not throwing out negatives just because they're negatives. We saw on the problem D, I got a negative 13, and it checked out 5. So we need to check this one too. I would use your calculator since we have a, a horrible fraction here. So if I plug this in to uh, 4x plus 3, we get 4 times negative 17 over 6 plus 3, and we get a negative here. I don't know if we get it here too, negative 17 over 6 plus 2 negative there as well. So it doesn't matter that they're both negative. When you get one negative, you're done. So this is extraneous again. And because this was my only probable or possible answer here, and it's extraneous, that means here we have no solution. So there was no other possible answer. Now this one here is a no solution. So always check these, please.